All right. Well, good after well, good afternoon on the East Coast in Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. Anyway, I can already tell we've got an international contingent in the audience uh, so far, which is wonderful. And look, uh, I got to commend you right out of the gate, because if there's one presentation that you want to see right now these days, it is this one. This is a life changing um, system that you're about to see today. I mean, it really is. There are lots of things that can move the needle for you on your investing and in, on your trading. And we're always working at that a bit, right? But if I had to say there's one thing that can move the needle the most and the fastest for someone, it is learning how to do what we're going to be talking about today. So welcome aboard. It is going to be fun. It's going to be informative. And yeah, you're going to really enjoy it, I hope so. Uh, we're going to talk about precision bottom fishing for explosive profits. And this is going to be a situation where we are looking to capitalize on the blood in the stock market and looking for opportunities to jump into baskets of stocks for days or weeks in which we can get double or triple digit returns in our portfolios. And, and that's not a misquote. <laughs> so uh, all bottom fishing opportunities are not created equal. You're going to learn that as we go through as well. Uh, but essentially, it's like stretching a rubber band. The further the market stretches, the more explosive the rebound that will inevitably come. And so let's get into it. We'll talk more about that as we go. So welcome aboard. Hopefully that at least sets the stage, gets you interested, because there's a lot to talk about here, and we want to make sure that you get it right. So first things first, it's a great almost quote, really, uh, from obviously a great man, our founder, Dr. Bart Delito, and says, what you got to learn is to not be fearful of market corrections and realize that if you have a precise system uh, like we have here, market bottoms create life-changing opportunities. I'm going to substitute the word explosive with life-changing because I do believe, while I don't believe it's imminent, I do believe that there is a life-changing bottom fishing opportunity on the horizon again. And, and I am just delighted with that opportunity because you feel like if you get one or two in a lifetime, boy, you've really done pretty well. <laughs> and I can tell you that we have, you know, uh, but I believe another bottom fishing opportunity of a lifetime uh, will come around again here. Uh, and I'm not willing to tell you when, because that predictions are, uh, <laughs> they're not worth anything. What we have is a system that will recognize it when it does happen. Okay. And other opportunities that may present themselves before that one and certainly after. So the, the really good news is this is a system that has found more than 40 market opportunities to bottom fish and get these double to triple, triple digit returns uh, in just days to weeks in the last 20 years. And so you're talking about a couple of times a year on average. And so it's not something that, you know, you're going to have to wait years and years to have an opportunity. Again, not all opportunities are created equal, right? So some are going to have more, more benefit than others, but they're all pretty good when you consider double to tri triple digit returns on an entire portfolio of stocks, not just a single trade, right? Uh, so let's get to it. Because in order to make this a reality, um, make sure that I'm showing my screen here. In order to make this a reality uh, for you guys, you know, what you're going to need to do first is conduct a paradigm shift, which, you know, that's that's the, really the trickiest part because it requires a new way of thinking. And for a lot of us old dogs, you know, <laughs> they, can't, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It's very true. I can tell you, I've got a 14-year-old Great Dane, uh, and she's not about to learn anything new at this point. It's a miracle she's still with us, and we're very thankful for that. She's in great health. But it's very difficult to teach an old dog a new trick, you know. We're going to have to do that because when we do it, it's going to change your life. Okay, so it's we're going to have to get rid of some of the things that we do 99% of the time in the stock market. And under this one instance, be willing to bend that quite a bit to, to get to make the most of these opportunities. Okay, so let's talk about how that's going to be done. My promise to you guys is that you're going to learn how to acquire the skills necessary to nail market bottoms with precision so that you'll never miss another bottom fishing opportunity ever again. Okay. My name is Steve Chappell. I'm the Director of Trading Systems Development, and I've been teaching 
this among many, many other things. Uh, I guess there isn't really anything I don't teach at this stage. Uh, but uh, boy, I tell you, when uh, Dr. Delito first introduced me to uh, this bottom fishing concept, again, it was a life-changing experience for me. And so I'm hoping that by me paying it forward, uh, it will be a life-changing opportunity uh, for many of you folks here as well. I am just a small piece of a very polished, well-run organization of people who all take pride in delivering the best stock market guidance you can get anywhere at any any price, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let's get into the journey. So the journey today, we're gonna look at a system that we use, it's not just me, lots of people use at this stage, lots of VectorVest users, people that have been with VectorVest for years and years and decades and decades for some of them. Uh, but a system that we all use to make precise market entries at market bottoms. We're gonna learn the key attributes to pick the best stocks at the right time, and we're going to learn trading tactics that make, you, that make you money. Now, in some respects, we're going to be hitting on the tip of the iceberg here, realizing that there's always more to learn. But if you just take into account the key things that we're going to be talking about here in this webcast, you will be a better, better bottom fisher leaving this room. Um, that is a fact. Okay. So what's the hardest part in nailing a market bottom for you guys? Let's get some some juices flowing, some creative thoughts uh, going on you guys front. I'll share some of the responses if any of you are willing to. Now we got big numbers in this room, so <laughs> a lot of people are interested in this, I can tell. Uh, but what's the hardest part just out of the box? You know, if you've never seen VectorVest before, do this in particular. You know, what's, the, what's the most challenging part of nailing a market bottom for you guys? Is it the real bottom? Yeah, so the question, <laughs> how do I know this is the one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's they all. They all tend to uh, to come around the same form of just knowing when when the right opportunities are there, right? Uh, there also is some questions about what are the right stocks to actually buy, right? I would think that that's a a, a major component. And then how do I manage those stocks, right? And so how do I know when to start cutting the cord? Here, let's start to make this a reality for folks, okay? So we're gonna get rid of some of our old habits that are gonna get in the way, and we're gonna learn about some new habits that we're gonna deploy only a couple of times a year. I say that, we actually went bottom fishing. I did live in front of customers with real dollars and real trading accounts last year in a room called the Jockey Club. We went bottom fishing five times in the, one of the worst years of the stock market, right? Of recent memory. And we made money four out of the five times, and we made more than 30% on those campaigns in real dollars when the year was done. Many of you are thinking, I didn't make 30% just trying to buy stocks all together. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so it works in the best of times. It works in the worst of times. And again, uh, once we have a real market bottom, one that's a V-shape that leads to higher highs in the stock market, that's when it gets really fun. Okay. So... Let's talk about removing some of the old that we actually want to keep handy because we're going to transition back to the old way shortly after we launch these bottom fishing campaigns, and that is to buy safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price. You know, so we want these beautiful, systematic, upward chart patterns going to higher highs month after month after month, and we want earnings leading the way. That's the engine that drives stock prices higher. I think all of us certainly at VectorVast, hopefully, all of us here at VectorVest realize that that is the key ingredient to being successful for the long term, particularly with our retirement minded monies and so on and so forth, right? But what we're gonna do is transition away from that and look for opportunities where uh, stocks can outperform. And so you've probably heard this expression before. I'm sure we've got Buffett in the webcast, if I remember correctly. I do this all just off the cuff, guys. It's in my blood. But, um, you know, buy when blood is in the streets. So this, is, this chart is an example of that. So this, this chart was actually taken from back in um, 2020. This is after the uh, COVID uh, bottom, right? And this is one of the stocks that would have been found in one of our more prolific bottom fishing scans. Uh, it's just one of many, uh, but uh, one that certainly led the charge. And... As, as you can just look at the scaling on this graphic here, the stock was trading less than $5 and then months later was trading north of 50. So this stock was up more than 1,000% uh, in just a few short months, okay? All right, so let's talk about how timing is everything. Realizing none of you would have made the 1,000%, <laughs> but if you would have got a piece of that, would that have been pretty cool? 
Yeah. Yeah. The only the only way you make the thousand percent is if you don't have any <laughs> any regard for your money whatsoever. <laughs> It's actually harder for me to manage the winners than it is to manage the losers, right? We're we're pretty quick to kick the losers out and uh, not quick enough on the winners sometimes, right? Uh, so anyway, uh, timing is everything. The traditional approach that many people try to deploy when doing things like this is just your ordinary typical technical analysis indicators. So we've got the NASDAQ on the top screen. We've got a stochastic that a technician might try to use to time things up and you know how the story is going to go right uh, so you can hopefully already see it on the screen a lot there's just a lot of false signals um you know there, it's not the only thing that's really taken into account is price action so you know there's no function here for market dynamics you know whatsoever and that's that's really ultimately going to be the missing piece and it's not to say that you know there wasn't some slight opportunity to scalp there or anything like that it's just in trying to use something like this to time markets, even if you start customizing look back periods, you know, I've been around technical analysis all my life. I, I know it very well, right? So yeah, I could massage this thing to do better than what you see on the screen. Ho hopefully you already know that I understand all those kinds of things. What I'm pointing out is there's more to the recipe <laughs> than, than trying to do it this way, okay? Uh, and so ultimately it results in the bad entry. Then we start thinking we can't be wrong. And that's when the snowball turns into an avalanche, right? And we end up holding on to losers that only get worse and worse. We double down, we triple down, we quadruple down, and it just keeps falling. And then eventually, you know, we decide we're never going to tr ever try to do that again. Yeah. So the problem is the timing is off. And the timing is off really from the perspective I already gave you and that that's not enough. It's just not. So we're gonna, that, the problem is the system is incomplete, you know, is what we're saying. That's just another way to say the same thing. There's more to it. And so let's dive into the fix, right? So I laid out the problem pretty simply. There's many different directions I could have gone there. <clears throat> What's most important is that you learn how to fix the problems. And so ultimately it comes down to a systematic approach. The more systematic we can become in this regard, the better we're gonna do, and that's the facts. So to some degree, you're also gonna have to trust that system. <laughs> Not to some degree, to the nth degree. Uh, you're gonna have to have faith and belief and trust uh, in the system that we're going to show. And so we're going to show enough evidence, <clears throat> hopefully in this webcast, to get you acclimated to that initially. And you can go back and test things out and look for yourself and do all the things you want to do uh, to see if it's something that doesn't work. And what you're going to find when you do that, when you go all the way down the rabbit hole, is you're going to say, wow, I'm glad I learned this stuff. Okay. So it is as easy as one, two, three. We could come on here and make things look super difficult, I suppose, but I don't like to teach that way. I like to teach things the easy way, and it is easy. Um, it's easy for us to say that it's easy because I've been with VectorVest for 20 years. It's going to take some thinking for you to fully understand exactly what we're doing, and many of you probably aren't going <laughs> to have a full, complete understanding. You're still going to know how to do it, right? Um, but there's <clears throat> different levels to the depth of knowledge, but the, the, the system is easy itself, right? So let's talk about it. If I were to draw this out, we're going to take a three-sided triangle. This is for all my, uh, is it right brain or left brain? I can't remember anymore. This is right brain, I think, where we start using imagery, right? Uh, when to buy is going to be the first and most important part of this uh, systematic approach, okay? You could also think of this as like a three-legged stool. If any one of these three legs of that stool is missing, you're going to have an awfully hard time doing it right. So the most important of which is going to be when to buy. When do I actually launch a bottom fishing campaign, for example? The next part is going to be what to buy. Okay. And then the final piece is going to be when to sell. Guys, there's lots of questions coming in. I got to stay focused on the content here. Um, so just so that you're aware of that. And I am flying solo. I will come back and try to answer some of those questions as we go. Uh, but when to buy, what to buy, and when to sell. Uh, so a little bit more on that. You know, what do we mean when we say when to buy? What we mean is precision. We need to be able to buy with precision, not guesswork. Uh, and know that, you know, at the end of the day, guys, the stock market is all about likelihood. You know, there are absolutely no 100% guarantees or certainties in anything that you do in the stock market. Uh, hopefully everybody in this room 
knows that. And if you don't, now you do, because that's the facts. Uh, but what we've got is a very precise way of establishing that likelihood. And should this system not work on a particular turn, what's going to happen next is it's going to work a few months later with an even better return. Okay, so it literally, it literally is something where if something doesn't work for whatever reason, the market turns right back over, there's just a better opportunity weeks or months down the road from where you are. So it's almost like no harm, no foul. Uh, but we, we, so that does happen on rare occasion and it is rare. Uh, and when it does, just know that a better opportunity is coming. Okay. Uh, also know on the what to buy front that we are going to delineate what we want to buy by way of the vector vest system. And it's not going to be your traditional high VST vector stock at that time or your high relative safety stock. It's going to be stocks that have a different set of attributes. It's going to be stocks that have explosive potential because of really a couple of things. Uh, and we'll get more on that as we get there. And then we're going to need to know uh, when to sell. So how to manage these stocks. We are going to need some fairly loose management. Uh, so oftentimes, by way of coping with that loose management, what we're going to do is reduce our buying power a bit on the overall positions, right? So that we don't risk more than one to 2% of our portfolio value in any trade that we ever do. Um, the, the easiest way, if we're going to use something like a 20% stop loss or something fairly loose, right? We're going to need then to reduce the capital exposure in those positions. A lot of people just start by cutting them in half. And when you do that, all the rest of the math falls in line. Okay. So if you ordinarily put $10,000 into a position, if you're going to be doing bottom fishing because of the leniency with the stop losses that you have to use, you want to think in terms of reducing some of that exposure. Okay. Because you will have losers even in uh, now they're also usually far more rare than the winners. <laughs> so, but there will be some, and when you do lose, you usually lose fairly big. And so you want to cut down your exposure to be able to absorb that. Uh, and, and, you know, let the eight or nine other stocks, hopefully in that basket, you know, do all the, do all the dirty work for you, do all the heavy lifting. All right. So in fact, let's dig more into those three things, right? So we talked about the three-legged stool. We need to know when to buy, what to buy, and when to sell, essentially. So we're going to really dive in a little bit deeper into the when to buy, okay? What we need is precise market entries. What we mean by that is getting in the day the market blasts off, not within a week, not within two weeks, not within four weeks. We we're talking about trying to get in the very day that the market blasts off. That's where the most opportunity is. Um, once you start to do a significant amount of study around this, what you'll realize is the first several days often are more meaningful than the next several weeks. <laughs> so uh, you want to be able to get in as early as possible without you know, being susceptible uh, to false signal. And that's really a tricky balance for a lot of folks at VectorVest. It makes it look easy. Okay. And it is, if you do it right. The one thing that you'll see here with this NASDAQ, you see have a market that was real bloody, right? Blood is in the streets, just like Warren Buffett said, you need to be ready for explosive opportunity at some point. This day here, look at how much space there is from one close to the next open. Lots of times on your best bottom fishing opportunities, the major indices, like I'll never forget, back in 2009, we'll set the stage. We're coming off the financial crisis, which is on the back end of a prior crisis, right? And the stock market is bloody as hell. <clears throat> I wake up in the morning on March, and Dr. Delito that weekend wrote an essay, we'll, we'll show it here in a bit, on March 6th, titled Itching to Rally, right? So we're already on the lookout. I wake up on March the 9th in the morning, uh, Monday morning it was, I believe, and as I normally do, I turn on the TV, right? And I put it on mute as any good sound rational person should. Uh, otherwise they just make your head spin on all the reasons why you don't agree with what they're saying. So anyway, <clears throat> what caught my eye was, holy mackerel, you know, the uh, Russell is up 6%, the S&P is up five and the Dow is up 4% in the pre-market. <laughs> I was like, well, it's no longer itching. You know, the rally is here. And uh, so what we look for is what we call an explosive day. And so we'll put a lot more education around what explosive day really means. But what it means is opening up exuberantly and that exuberance carries forward through the remainder of the day. So very rarely do you ever you know, say open lower and then explode. It does happen from time to time. Uh, but uh, 
under our approach, you're going to catch it no matter what happens. What we want to try to catch is that explosive day and just go for it right out of the gate. That's when it really gets fun. Okay. Uh, so we're talking about getting it right there, right where that uh, circle is. Now, what does that mean? That means not getting in too early or too late, you know, because of some technical situation where you're passing through a resistance level. So now you know the market's likely to keep running, which it did. Congratulations. Look at the look at the run in, in, in price here on this side of the resistance break and look at the explosiveness in price down here. There's more returns here than there is there. Isn't that something, right? So what we gotta do is we gotta get in down here. This was the explosive day, right? And it didn't explode right out of the gate. So maybe we caught it this day. There's still more returns here than there is there, okay? And we got to get in a situation where we can do that. So the missing piece, we need precise indicators for when markets are bottoming and absolutely ready to blast off. Timing is everything. Here's a chart. These are actual dates in which you could have deployed this type of methodology. Then we're going to get into the software and actually show some. So, uh, yep, right off the COVID collapse, this one was also really good in November of 2020. That went into really when growth came off the table completely in February of 2021 and has never recovered really since, right? That's where your fulgence and your, uh, you know, all those really explosive growth stocks have, have come down 60% from those levels, right? To this point, 80%, some of them, you know, particularly the ones that weren't making money like Roblox and Beyond Meat and all that kind of crazy stuff, okay? But, you know, there were great opportunities here. There's even been some last year and even some now. So let's, let's transition over. I'll show you around here a little bit. Because when we get it right, even if we buy something like Apple, we can have some explosive returns. <laughs> now, we don't want to buy Apple because we can buy better typically. Okay? Now, sometimes Apple might end up in a scan. It's going to be pretty rare. <laughs> but it depends on which one you pick, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's take first things first. What I'm going to do is get into the market timing graph. Okay, And when I get here, <clears throat> the first thing that you want to notice if we look at any reasonable amount of length, is there are times where markets bottom, right? Like back here in 2018, back here in 2020, and maybe back here in October, although probably not likely. But it did bottom for a little while, right? And there was some pretty significant run on each of these low marks in the market. You often get some pretty good run. That's how I say even last year, there was uh, five good um, campaigns, four of which remained profitable and nicely so. And, one, and what was the general direction of the market? Down, right? But it's these opportunities here. And one is down the horizon somewhere. I'm not willing to commit to when that's going to be, and nobody should, right? But there's another bottom like that at some point. Those are what you call bottom fishing opportunities of a lifetime. And basically, the more the market goes down, <laughs> the more that opportunity will present itself. So just like back in 2009, when the market's bottom there, talk about bottom fishing opportunity of a lifetime, that's still probably the best, even though I made more money in 2020 and 21 than I made in the prior 19 years of my investing career off of that bottom. Okay. Uh, this one was, <laughs> went on for what, 12 years and largely we're still in it now, at least by way how VectorVest classifies um, bull and bear markets. Um, that's a story for another day. But uh, yeah, so if you think that the pain is, is necessarily over here, I'm not so sure that that's the case, okay? Now, that's just gonna create a better bottom fishing opportunity somewhere down the line. So how do we do it, right? I'll get a little bit into it here. We're gonna show you how you can learn a lot more uh, at the end, but we'll give you some nuts and bolts. We, wanna, we want our investors to do well. So I'm trying to zoom in here, hopefully it will. If you do well, we do well. That's, how, that's the way we think around here. And if you want to learn more, we're going to show you how. Hmm. Come on, zoom in. All right, give me a sip of water then while we wait here. I might have to try to reload this thing. Interesting. All right, give me a sec here, guys. All right, let's try this again. Yes, this is being recorded uh, to answer that question while I had some time there. So we'll just go back to the most recent one. I was going to go back to 
you know, one where everybody's gonna be like, oh, well, that was a, you know, flash in the pan kind of thing. So look, here's a market that was real bloody. And we've got a, I say precise system of doing this. We're on an end of day graph, okay? We like to look at daily results in this case, not weekly. Certainly not intraday until you get to the confirmation levels. Uh, but down, 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 right? Now, why wasn't this a bottom fishing opportunity? You know, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. It was the news that Citigroup turned a profit the first quarter of that year, right? And so that was unexpected. Catalysts often are. Just like you could wake up tomorrow and have a catalyst, whether you know that or not. It's possible. They often come when you absolutely least expect them, right? What was the catalyst here in March of two, late March of 2020? That was the Fed announcing they were going to sink trillions and trillions of dollars into the financial markets to float them, right, and float us by way of that. Uh, and so that was the tipping point, right? And so, you know, a couple of other things. Um, this was a little bit unique in that the nature of this was panic to the point where everybody was panicked all the way up until and so the market got so low so fast that traditionally our indicators like the mti and the buy to sell ratio that are on this screen don't usually get down to these levels and stay down at these levels for this length of time it's just that panic kept running kept running kept running kept running kept running right uh, so we either try to find the explosive day or if you want to play things the most conservatively, but still maximize the opportunity, you wait for a primary wave up. And that's the most sure way uh, to get on the right side of things. And when you do that, <clears throat> notice there is no primary wave up here. Okay. So when you get a primary wave up <clears throat> with the MTI and the buy to sell ratio below some critical levels, you're really looking for a wonderful bottom fishing opportunity. So with the buy to sell ratio, that always has to be the case. This, this next level has to be there, okay? It has to be below 0.2. When you're below 0.2, that's 0 0.2, okay? Not 1.2, it's 0 0.2. When you're below 0 0.2, you are searching for a bottom. You don't have one yet. So you're looking for what you deem the explosive day and the removal of fear, <laughs> that it's not just an aberration, right? Uh, and if the MTI can also find itself below 0.6, typically you have an even better opportunity. Um, so we use that as almost a gauge on how deep is the trough and thereby how explosive the rally that ensues should be. So let's just do a quick little study here of, um, we're going to tie this together with searches here in a second. But long story short, I know many folks who went bottom fishing this day on March the 24th. I also know many who went the 25th and some who went as late. The latest you ever want to be is confirmation day of the primary wave. Okay. And that's another follow through day on that signal. And so the morning of that day would be, would have been as late as you want to get. Okay. So with that in mind, so these dates are March the 24th, March the 25th, and March the 26th, right? And we'll show you around here a little bit in a sec. Let's get back to the slides before we do that, because we're going to get to the what to buy here in a second. I'll even show you that this would have worked well uh, this year, okay? We'll talk about that. So don't think about this is all in the past. It's never going to happen again. Look, there's opportunity to do this this year, and the opportunity was great. Um, I wasn't in the jockey club at that time. I was uh, out sick, unfortunately, with COVID, actually. Uh, or we would have done it. I'd have <clears throat> evidence to show. But in terms of what to buy, stocks with explosive upside potential. So let's talk about what are the explosive stocks that we want to look for. In simple terms, we want to buy stocks that can double or triple uh, in days to weeks, not years. So that's what we want. <laughs> we don't want just Apple. Uh, although if, if we can find it, we'll take it, um, I'll absolutely take it, you know, but usually we're, we're not buying stocks of quite that caliber because they're not going to give you those triple digit returns in just days or weeks. Are they, is Apple going to give you a triple digit return in days or weeks? Probably not. Right. It could still give you a good one, real good one. Okay. And I'm not saying that you don't have Apple in your retirement account simultaneously and you're been using options to mitigate losses, right? My assumption is that you already own a lot of those stocks anyway. 
So uh, the traditional approach is only buy something that you'd be perfectly happy to hold on to if the market shut down for 10 years. <laughs> He's a prophet. Seems like that's kind of where we are. <laughs> oh, dear. Here's what good stocks do off a, off a really good market bottom, okay? So in this, in this uh, result here, we're going to look at some in-program results in a second, but this is a snapshot taken. You can see Amazon, Facebook, Home Depot, Disney, Visa, Google, Walgreens, Apple, Gilead, okay? Uh, congratulations, these stocks as a unit, if you were to bought some of the very best stocks in all of the stock market, anybody disagree with that? At least back at that time, certainly in 2016. I know what some of your opinions are on Disney and others right now. <laughs> I mean, back then, okay? Amazon, Facebook, Home Depot, Disney, Walgreens, Gilead Sciences, all great stocks. Hard to argue differently, okay? Uh, congratulations, they're up 9%. The S&P is up 10 and a half. So if that was our portfolio, we are underperforming the stock market. Do you want to know why? Well, we didn't buy the right ones, but let's just say we took $20,000, put it to work. You just made 1,936 bucks. That's pretty darn good, right? Because you did that in like three months, okay? Days to weeks, not years is what we said, right? This is how I feel when something like that happens. I feel like that guy. <laughs> we don't want to be that guy. <laughs> it still happens from time to time, but that's a different story. Shouldn't happen in bottom fishing, okay? Uh, so not satisfied with the results. What do, how do I find the big winners? Well, we use scans to find them. So when we tie the picture, right, which was March of 2020, uh, to the search, let's see what happens. Okay, so in VectorVest, under Unisearch, if I can find it, there it is. There is a whole bottom fishing folder. I am going to give you some low-hanging fruit. I'm giving away too much information here. It's just how my heart works. Because <laughs> we, we do have a course for all of this, of course. You know that's coming already, I'm sure. But I'm going to give you a lot of good stuff. I'm not giving away all the all the stuff, though. But uh, this is enough to get you really rolling, okay? So let's see here. I'm going to go to searches bottom fishing in there. Should be no mystery. We've talked about it time and time and time and time again. There's a couple that we really like uh, that tend to offer up the most opportunity. That's going to be something called jailbreak, another one called Blyers. There are others, and you would learn about that in the course, okay? And why. But um, let's just start with our favorite, all right? Let's go back to 2020. March, and let's see, the 24th was the earliest, right? That was the blast off day. Now this assumes the close. So really in essence, you're more headed towards, you know, the 25th at this point, which is fine, all right? I'm not here to talk about, you know, there's a real, there's a realism that I hopefully want, am getting across that I understand. And I want you to know that I understand, okay? I'm willing to accept some, <laughs> some slippage here. Um, and it doesn't matter at all is, is the main point. So I'm going to go ahead and click on quick test, right? And when I do this, well, they're up 258% all the way to today. So that's not bad. It's about 85% uh, a year, right? But we'll march it back. That's not bad. Don't we just get like totally detached from... Uh, <laughs> ordinary ways of thinking <laughs> for most folks <laughs> that's 85 percent overall 21 percent a year that's all right well, that's but what about now what if we were to shut it down here and then just took everything we got and moved more towards apple walgreens gilead disney and the like right because here you've got 88 percent in just the first three months we've got 85 percent all the way to today you made 88% in the first three months. You did better in three months than you did in two years. Isn't that cool? Nobody thinks that's cool. Am I the only one that thinks that's cool? Oh, I know what some of you are thinking. I'm not buying a stock that's $1.75, $2.51, 2 dollars Why not? First of all, Citigroup was about $2.50 in March of 2009. <laughs> and there's actually some pretty decent stocks in here. Yeah, a lot of you are saying very cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, and it's real, guys. I mean, you know, so look, what if we would have started a day later, okay? 
I'll add the, all the realism you want. If you start a day later, you're not going to do as well. But you're more sure you're right, right? So quick test the top 10. Oh, we did do better. <laughs> we got lucky here. That doesn't usually happen. <laughs> oh, good. We're good. <laughs> 92%. All right, let's start a day later than that. 85%. All right, we're going the other way again, right? Let's start a day later than that. Hundred and thirty three percent. Congratulations, you bought the dip on that day. You wouldn't you wouldn't have known that that was gonna yeah, you wouldn't have done that. <laughs> all right so this is you know this is a kind of a unique one but let's start let's start how about this let's start a month later right or let's start on the confirmed up which was may that's what we're running the test too <laughs> see <laughs> see you all your bottom vision opportunity is gone right uh let's run a couple of different searches some of you are saying i'm not buying one two dollar stocks right i get that i understand that for some of you again you'd be surprised what 20k can do for you or for some of you 200k is 20k right but uh anyway uh let's go back here everybody's in different circumstances you know and i get that right i get that but let's run uh Blyers. this one has a little bit higher stock prices not exorbitantly right but there's nothing in the one dollar your, your two dollar right 93 percent Okay, how about, uh, this one's usually pretty good, Pirates. Now you're in nine, sixes, fives, sevens, right? Quick test the top 10, 73%. Still pretty good, isn't it? How many winners are there on these tests, by the way? All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go to, uh, how about blue chip bargains? All right, let's do it on blue chips. Let's buy your Deltas, your Transdigums, your Trantex, your Bank of Americas your Chubbs, your DR Hortons, anybody scared to buy those? It's still better than buying Apple and all that usually, but you know, in this case, you know, it, you're back to mark, you're back to that dilemma we're talking about <laughs> where, you know, you're back to the high quality stuff. That's not, Buffett told you, you buy the blood, right? These were not the bloodiest stocks in all of the stock market. They just weren't. I mean, that doesn't, you know, obviously Delta was pretty, pretty, pretty bloody, pretty bloody, but you know, they just weren't. So, um, bottom fishing and rising industries. I think we'll get some reasonable prices in here. Oh, pretty low. I'm trying to split the difference for you. How about this? Let's do S and P 500 stocks. These have to at least be on the S and P 500 index, right? Five, three, seven, nine. Okay. Boom. You know, 11.32. So there's a breaking point here where you got to decide which ones do I want to go with? Which ones are going to likely be the more explosive and Guys, how, if you've been with Vector Vest a long time, you've heard these names before. How many times have you heard Jailbreak? How many times have you heard Blyer's Bottom Feeders, right? And that that was years and years and years and years and years and more than a dozen years in, in cases before any of this happened, okay? So we've been saying this for 20 years. We've been teaching it for 20 years. People have been doing it for 20 years. Now it's your turn because these are still going to be the best searches at the next one, okay? Um, and so on and so forth. If you want to play things a little bit more conservatively, you know, you pay a little bit of a price for that. But at the end of the day, you know, it's still worth doing. And I will say the S&P 500 stop ascending normally outperforms the market <laughs> just about every turn. It didn't on that one. Got a couple of haymakers in here that didn't work out, but it would have if you would have, it still would have, okay? And I'll, the one thing that we're not doing here at all is managing these positions and when you start to add the management in believe it or not those results that we were just showing you go way up in all cases the s p returns more than double the Blyer's bottom feeders more than double the the jailbreak performance that i just showed more than doubles when you add the money management uh to it okay uh so and in some cases four times it <laughs> see what i mean so this is like we're just we're working our way there man you know we're on the path to getting it right and we're not fully there yet we've only this is only two of the three so i guess if you remove the three-legged stool is not a great analogy because if you get two out of the three right you still do pretty well <laughs> it's, 
You do pretty well. It just sounds stupid. You do pretty well. 92% in three months. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's let's have a little bit of fun. You're saying I couldn't have done that this year, man. There's no way, bro. All right. Well, let's see. Let's say we wait, you know, let's say we played things conservatively. And we say, all right, we got a market here that's low, right? Buy to sell ratio. Uh, well, the buy sell ratio didn't quite make it all the way down there. That's too bad. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's say 1025, 22, 1025, 22. Make sure that's still checked all the boxes here. Yeah, the MTI was below 0.6, well below, right? And let's say we wanted to play things safe, and let's go with the uh, primary wave here. It really doesn't matter which one we buy. You want to buy the first one? Let's buy the first one. Okay, so 10.3. I mean, the first one looks like that was the worst one, right? That's why that's why I picked it. Not because I think it's going to be the best, but you're going to get off to the rockiest start, right? Uh, so, yeah, let's try buyers. 10-3. Wow. Ah! <laughs> well, it didn't do as well this time around. <laughs> But you get the point. So let's have a lot of fun. Let's go back to because uh, the reality you wouldn't have held it even that long. Let's go back to where we can hold it for some length of time. Let's go back to if I can at least show it. Hopefully not zoom in, but just show it. Go to another bottom fishing opportunity of a lifetime. So back here, oops, I still not brought that back far enough. Back far enough. Go back here, boom, 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 boom. So you're gonna have to trust me on these dates. The program just is not performing well for me in here for whatever reason. So March, I'll show you how we can find out. That's the time frame I'm gonna key in on and I'm gonna do that for a specific reason because I'm gonna give you some more of the secret sauce here hopefully not give away the whole thing. And this was, this is actually a secret sauce that would have kept you from buying, <clears throat> say, Blyer's bottom feeders on that most recent one. So we're going to try to tie all that together. So what I'm going to do here is go into the views and hopefully I can go back all the way. I have not tried to do this since the new, <laughs> since the new format came out. So we're going to go back to 2009. We're going to go into March and go to the 6th. And this last ingredient is important. So this is, a, this is going to be helpful in determining the explosive day that you really want to pay attention to as well. Okay. So on March the 6th, we wrote an essay, Dr. Delito did it to be more specific. The market is itching to rally while stock prices have been going down, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, what do you, starts to get into here is the similarities that we're beginning to see between the current market situation and when the market took off from the tech bust debacle, right? From the tech boom debacle uh, that inevitably imploded. And in the strategy section, it'll lay that out, okay? Exactly what we're talking about here, in addition to some of the other insight that was added in that essay on you know seeing some buying of the of the dips and in, in the afternoons and such. So um, what we say here is we're going to go along with one of the following strategies should the market take off. So we showed the most recent COVID situation. Do you see some similar names in here? Do you see Blyers? Do you see a jailbreak? Okay. Do you see pirates that I ran? Bottoms up, I didn't run. 
but it tends to be a pretty good one. And so anyway, if we then go over to Unisearch, and we'll look at this bottom, okay? Let's see if it was any anywhere near as good as uh, the COVID bottom. Let's go back. And the more you look at this stuff, the more you'll be blown away. Um, so let's go here, March. We'll go to the 6th. And we'll start running it because what's going to happen here is if I did I close the views? I hope not. Good. So what I want to do is actually go forward a day at a time. And it's, I think it's more challenging in this new one. But what we'll do is go back again. I'm going to figure a better way to do this, I think, for the next one. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and leap forward to the 10th. Oops, 2009, Steve. Come on, man. There we go. So I'm going to skip forward here to the 10th, okay? And when I do, lo and behold, the itching to rally turns into news that Citigroup has been profitable in the first two months of this year, sparked a major rally on Wall Street, presuming the rally continues tomorrow. Prudent investors may go bargain hunting and bottom fishing. Aggressive investors should play the market to the upside. We already went long with jailbreak. So we eat our own cookie, okay? We eat our own cooking. Um, we've been doing it for years. <laughs> and Dr. Delito is not of the faint of heart. Uh, so we actually bought jailbreak on that day, notified our customers that we had, okay? So let's assume you missed the blast off that day. Let's assume you didn't find out what we did until the day was over. I think that's the best way to show this, even though many folks bought the day of. Uh, so anyway, if I go to uh, Unisearch and we go to jailbreak, right? And we, oh, we've got to run it on the 10th. Oops, 2009, Chapel. March the 10th. So this is another, again, a couple of weeks before the confirmed up. And there's a little old Citigroup right there. Isn't that something? Citigroup was up 38% that day. You know, we already bought, we bought stocks at 10 a.m. So I think Citigroup was up like 24% before we even bought it that day. <laughs> In like the first half hour. <laughs> that's crazy. But anyway, uh, that's a story for another day too. But uh, Doc used to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, so here's where they are all the way to now, right? That was a bottom fishing opportunity of a lifetime. You could have got Citigroup, you know, for peanuts. Uh, this is split adjusted pricing now at this point on some of these stocks. Uh, Citigroup was trading well less than 14 at that time, okay? Uh, now, if, I, um, if I'd say, well, you know, <laughs> most people aren't going to live, live in that portfolio long enough to see all those gains, and that's true, you know. Uh, let's just go for a couple weeks. How about a month? So we'll run it for, we'll run it forward to the 17th. 127%. So you're seeing, you know, that same kind of um, performance that you're seeing with the more recent COVID uh, situation here as well. Actually, even a little bit more explosive here over the first month, I think. Uh, let's go forward to three months, right? Now the confirmed down starting to come into view. Two hundred and forty-three percent now. Mm. Okay, and that's with uh, you know not so insignificant stocks here. Uh, there are some really decent stocks in this list, not of the caliber of of the highest caliber stocks in the stock market. To be clear, but. Let's talk about some of the ingredients on the stock level. So what these searches are really doing, guys, in almost every instance, is they're looking for stocks that have at least some value that have endured the most pain in the slide. And it's doing that by way of what we call a sort here at VectorVest. So in this particular one, jailbreak, it's looking for somewhat high VST, at least relative to the price destruction. It's looking for somewhat high VST in relation to the price destruction, 
right? So many of these stocks, if you look at the relative value, for example, unless it's an ETF, the relative values are above to well above one. So there's tremendous upside potential on these stocks, particularly since the relative timings, I mean, relative timing goes on a zero to two scale, right? It goes from 0.01. <laughs> I don't think there's such a thing as a zero. <laughs> If it's zero, you know, you're delisted. Uh, 0 0.01 to 2.0. Now you could get that. But, uh, you know, this is 0 0.2, right? 0 0.03, 0 0.04. And it's actually ranked that way. So you're getting kind of the best of all worlds here. You're getting some ups tremendous upside potential with the, um, and, and that's something nobody else can do. Nobody else can do that. They might tell you that they think they can. Right. But they, they definitely don't do it with our proprietary data. There's just no way they could. OK, uh, so that's what really makes VectorVest special in this arena is both the timing front along with, you know, the uh, the stock performance. You tie all that together and boy, you you really got you're really cooking. All right. So I got to round third base and start coming home. All right. So let's get back in here. Now, I could do about 40 of those bottoms, including five last year, and show you some pretty good performance. I'm just going to get to the heart of the matter here, guys. Let's just take it on home, okay? Um, yeah, we want to learn. We want to shift away from just buying the ordinary stocks here. We want what VectorVest can provide by way of these explosive candidates, the stocks that have somewhat reasonably good to excellent, actually, um, fundamentals in relation to the price destruction. That's, uh, that's the real key. And there's a lot of stocks that people think that they know are high quality that aren't, you know, and that's where you get in trouble with like the experts and things. Uh, but anyway, how could knowing precisely the right time to buy stocks change things for you? Do you think this guy, do you think the information in this webcast that you've seen so far can change things for you in a pretty big way? What do you think? What do you guys think? I know what I think, but what? What do you guys think? <laughs> All right, so resounding yeses. Lots, tons, tons of yeses coming in. All right, it's great. Uh, and you know, the whole the, the the real key here is when you're in kind of the teeth of uh, of a market that where the investment climate has at least become cloudy. You cannot expect right. What, what we need right now for you to be able to expect good returns with this methodology is for the indicators to get to where they need to go, which they're getting close again. But then we need that catalyst, right? To That's really gonna propel the stock market for at least weeks to come. And I just don't see one, but sometimes, sometimes the catalyst appears like with Citigroup out of the blue. Nobody had any idea that that was gonna happen. And that's why the markets reacted so exuberantly when it did, right? So it will happen again. Something like that will happen again. And I, I do believe that even with just the, the damage that we've seen in the market so far, you know, uh, should one show itself here in the near term, you could have some really good, uh, uh, really good potential performance. Uh, and a lot of times it's something that we're not even thinking about, you know, but uh, the good news is, oh, final recipe. Um, so on the VectorVest nightly newsletter, okay, one of the things that kept me out of a bottom fishing opportunity perceivably by some just a couple of weeks ago was absence of those bottom fishing search results in the vector vest views in the um, one day derby winners. Okay. And it's really like the, the, the whole enchilada when you've got bottom fishers in both the one day and the five day performers in the newsletter. And we just have not seen that. Uh, we did see that in spots last year in 2021, but we really have not seen that this year. And that's the kind of thing that keeps you out of uh, that hot water that you saw you can get yourself into if you're not careful. Okay. So that's part of the recipe. Mm. Now, five trading tactics that make you money. Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Totally agree with that. So having no plan, not an option. Emotional trading is what it will lead to. We don't want to just flush money down the drain. That's right. We want to do things right. So five trading tactics that make you money. We want to do five to 10 stocks per campaign. I would say when you're new, start with 10. Once you start to uh, feel more and more comfortable, five, sometimes I even do seven, just kind of split the difference a little bit uh, and go a little more towards five. Five does often outperform 10. 10 
almost always outperforms 20, for example, right? So there's a line here somewhere. The one caveat to that, <clears throat> when you start going towards five, you got to reduce your buying power even a little bit more to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, going overboard there. <laughs> so, so there's a balance that you try to find. Bottom line, guys, <clears throat> between five to 10, it's kind of like a bell curve. You remember how teachers used to grade on a bell curve? <laughs> Right in there with uh, seven and eight tends to be kind of the, the height of the bell curve okay, on the performance level. Uh, never risk more than one to 2% of your portfolio value in any single trade. So again, a lot of times we're going to have to maybe reduce, not take you know $100,000 and put it into each one of these five positions, for example, <laughs> although it's tempting. Uh, don't buy more than two. And if you're going to do that much capital, then you definitely need to start thinking about, you know, you don't want to push stocks. So, you know, you don't want to buy more than, say, 2% of any outstanding shares of a company. So you want to start looking at those kinds of things if you're going to do this with real big money. OK, and you might have to go up to a Pirates Long or a S&P 500 or something in that case. Or you use less than you wanted to and still have a lot of fun and still do well and still put all that great money to use at a really great time in old faithfuls, okay? Uh, number three, don't buy more than two stocks per industry group. This is detrimental at times, but I think also imperative because it keeps you out of the instance where you don't make anything when the stock market takes off and all you did was buy a whole bunch of petroleum stocks. Now, there have been times when that's exactly what you wanted to do, like 2016, uh, but I still don't just don't think it makes good monetary sense. Uh, it has been more helpful than not over the years, uh, but it has prohibited some performance because of playing it um, a little bit more safe. So it does cut both ways. More often than not, it cuts the right way and it keeps your risk where it needs to be. And that's spread evenly uh, in the portfolio. Okay. And that's assuming 10 stocks, really. So if you were doing five, I would do five, one in one per industry. Uh, Number four, favor ratcheting or trailing stop losses. We prefer profit locker. Yep. So we're going to show that here quick and allow your portfolio to extinguish itself by not replacing stocks that hit your stop loss. That's key. So what we want to do is we're going to use a stop loss that's fairly loose in the early stages <clears throat> that still can account for huge gains. And then when we sell something, we're not going to replace it unless it's like within the first three or four days. Like if, 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 you know, if, if you get in one day and God forbid, and it does happen from time to time, you know, one of your stocks hit the, hits the stop loss, like the next day, you can replace that. And you probably should, uh, there's still plenty of opportunity, but once you get, you know, several days to a week into a, um, an upturn, you want to stop doing this. Why do I want to stop doing this? If you just put your head around that, if the stocks are still low five days after the market took off, there's a problem. See what I mean? If the stocks are still low five days after the market took off, there's a problem. Those stocks aren't participating. Those stocks aren't leading the charge. They're not leading the rally. So stop. Don't do that. Okay. Um, now, if you look at a lot of back testing and such, you can make some assumptions the other way. But here's the deal. What people are forgetting is what you want to do is instead of doing that, right, you want to use other vector vest scans that are more specialized for the current situation you want to start moving towards you know your better overall quality stocks once you get several weeks off of that bottom and it's a lot easier to do and live with right the volatilities are less you know it's worth gambling at the lows it is not worth continuing to gamble weeks after the market is up off the lows it's not it, that's not the right thing to do Okay, so profit locker example, it works really well. Okay, I'm not going to spend a lot of time belaboring all of this. Uh, this is from trades from actual portfolios. This is, um, uh, you know, taken out of, of the software so that you can look at some of this. It does a really good job at what I would call Pareto's Law, getting 80% of what's possible with 20% of the work. Okay, uh, this is a look at what a bottom fishing campaign would look like, like on an equity curve, say in your brokerage account or something, if you're able to view it that way. Um, once you start to see the run for uh, a couple of weeks start to come out of the portfolio, I suggest just going ahead and moving all of the positions to cash. And normally I'm in a cash position round about the time of the confirmed up call on most occasions. Okay.
because at that point on the confirmed up, you want to be doing what we do on confirmed ups. You want to be buying Chapel's Champs. You want to be buying, you know, ruler stocks. You want to be buying this high quality stocks again. Okay. So choosing not, not to know when or how and get more insight on exactly how to do that. That's what you got to decide. That's what you got to decide for yourselves. So I'm noticing the time I got around home base here. Uh, you're here today because you want to take advantage of your opportunities. Oh, I can just see Tom Brady's face right here. I love it. <laughs> I'm a Bucks fan, so <laughs> he did us really good at the end of the day. I had to switch my stance on him. Uh, confident. You want to be confident. And ultimately, your system is going to determine your success, okay? So it's as easy as one, two, three. You still got to know how to do it. Uh, in terms of making the shifts, we need to move from uncertainty to, precise, to precision. We need to move from ordinary stocks to explosive stocks. We need to move from not knowing when to sell to knowing exactly when to sell, right? And you have a choice. You have a choice right now. Um, you can try to do all this all alone and you can do pretty well with everything that you've learned in this webcast. I make a point that in every webcast I do, you try to ha you have some value there in, in I have moved the needle forward for you guys, whether you realize it or not, if you listened. Okay. But you are going to make some mistakes along the way. You can leverage more of my guidance. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've done more than 40 bottoms myself. Okay. Uh, so we're going to be teaching a course here. It's called five weeks to learn how to generate explosive profits by nailing bottoms with precision. Uh, so, um, that's not the correct amount of time remaining, <laughs> more so just the image that you want to look for to register. I'm going to go ahead and put that out into the chat right now. So the chat is, or the um, the link is this one here. It's in go to webinar right now. It's vectorvest.com slash bottom fishing. Uh, when you get here, it just worked seconds ago. Come on. There we go. Uh, when you get here, you're actually going to see this image right here. Uh, be the easiest way to identify it. So when you click that link, it brings you here. It's $595 for the entire course. We're going to talk about what's in the course here in just a sec. Uh, there are people that have paid $2,000 for, for this course. And uh, still to this day, I've had nobody ask for their money back on this course. I've been teaching it for 20 years, uh, probably more than at least, I don't know, 100 iterations of this, okay? Uh, and some people paid that full price, really did. I'm not making that up. $595 is a steal. You can make $595 with this technique in five minutes, okay? Uh, that's ridiculous. So enough said about that. <laughs> I feel like they're giving it away. <laughs> so it's not for everyone. Uh, if, but uh, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. That's what old, old, old Abe Lincoln would tell you right now. Guys, if you want to do it and do it right, learn from the, learn from the pros, man. Learn from the people. I learned from Dr. D. I'm, all I'm doing, Jerry and I, we're going to pay it forward. So Jerry and I teach the course. Uh, the course is as follows. There's five modules. One, the first one is the secret to precision bottom fishing. We're going to dive more into the psychological correct mindset uh, that you have to get accomplished for yourself. Number two, how to spot those bottoms. There's more to it. Okay. We're going to talk about candle patterns. We're going to talk about divergences. We're going to talk about uh, really how to know that that catalyst might really be right around the corner. It's odd how that happens, uh, but it does, right? And so uh, even if you don't get a catalyst, there's still likely going to be a bottom fishing opportunity there on a primary wave up. We're going to talk all about that stuff, okay? And likely a good one. On module three, we dive more into the searches and we, we show you around a little bit more, explain the lay of the land, give you our guidance on, you know, both real result that we've accomplished uh, and also just a whole lot of testing and empirical evidence. What are some of your very best searches to use in VectorVest to get the most bang for your buck? Again, if you're paying attention today, I gave away half of it. Well, not even quite half, <laughs> but gave you a few good ones to be sure. Uh, module four, trading tactics that make you money. There's, uh, we're going to build more onto that. We're going to show you exactly how to set it up in VectorVest so that you can do it and implement it as easy peasy, lemon squeezy as possible. Okay. So you'll literally have everything set up, right? And, and as, as portfolio manager feeds you the details, you just implement it with your broker. If you have RoboTrader, you can literally just let it fly. Um, you'll have all the rules programmed in. 
And the only thing you got to remember is don't replace things you sell after about the first three or four days. Okay. Uh, and then we give you the definitive plan. You know, definitive. What does that word mean? That means the final answer. It means it is the answer. <laughs> so uh, this is something you can print out, put on your desk. It's the only thing that you need to be able to do this going forward. Um, so give me six weeks. We'll show you how to get it all done. This is all recorded. It's none of none of this part is going to be live, but you're going to get all six of these sessions. We're throwing in a bonus session. That, that's where we get into a lot of the really um, fun stuff on market analysis that when you see those things, boy, you know the big one's coming. And then all that for $5.95, just go to the website I put into your chat. Also, we will be doing three, though, live uh, mastery sessions. So I will be doing the first two. Jerry will be doing the third one, I believe. If not, if Jerry can't do that one, I'll come off of vacation for an hour to you, just for you guys. That's how much I love you guys, man. One day you'll understand. But mastery, April 18th, 2 p.m. Everything's at 2 p.m. Eastern. And I believe these are Tuesdays, although, let me see. Yeah, they're Tuesdays. Tuesdays at 2. Ah, it makes it easy. Tuesdays at 2. Tuesdays at 2. Tuesdays at 2 uh, for three weeks in a row starting the 18th. Three weeks in a row starting the 18th. And now I'll take some quick questions, then we got to uh, free up for some other folks here at VectorVest to do their thing. Uh, do you buy stocks with only buy ratings when bottom fishing? No. Uh, actually, if you were paying close attention when I was showing uh, the, the attributes of the stocks to buy, the relative timings are often close to 0 0.01. So they're all sells. They're all sells. The only, 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 only time VectorVest will ever tell you to buy a sell recommended stock <laughs> unless it's a, a quick trading opportunity or something in a specialized format, the only time you're going to be buying and holding on to stocks like this that are sells is at market bottoms. So maybe once or twice a year, mm -hmm. the only time. You never, never, ever, never, never want to do that going forward. Yep. So that's a good question. Uh, what kind of percentages with profit locker? So, um, yeah, I don't have anything run, but I can say this. I mean, if you if you uh, if you follow what we detail in this course, that Blyer's bottom feed, feeders uh, return goes into the four hundreds instead of the ninety twos. It goes into the four hundreds. Okay, it goes into the four hundreds because that market bottom just kept rolling. So we didn't get into that situation where we're down for a few weeks and just cut the cord. Okay. It goes into the 400. So four times, like, you know, reasonable expectation is on most occasions, it's going to juice out a little bit more. Uh, but on the really big ones, you know, as many as four times um, those percentages. Yep. And remember all these opportunities, even all 40, we only really showed the two majors because we really think that there's a third major down the line here somewhere. But, um, you know, all of them represent double digit possibilities. Um, yeah, so uh, even that's pretty good in days to weeks, right? Let's see, I shall consider. All right, considering is good. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for all the kind words there at the bottom. Let me go back up here towards the middle. What was your actual net profit in 2022? My actual net profit, well, I'll put it this way. I made more than 300% real dollars in a large account in 2021. How's that for returns? More than 300% in one year. All right, got to go. Have VectorVest trending, and that's not with like 10 grand or something, okay, bud? <laughs> not even close. All right. Do you buy stocks with only buy ratings when bottom fishing, or do you? Okay, we covered that one. Let's keep going. <laughs> It's fun. VectorVest made me a millionaire, guys. Multi. We're going, we're going towards multi. Listen, I started with 20 grand 20 years ago, man. You can do it. You can do it. All right, guys. Uh, that looks like all the major stuff. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. Get to that website. We'll change your life, man. I promise. That's my promise to you. If I don't do it, we'll give you the money back. No issue. It won't happen. <laughs> all right. We'll see you soon. Good luck, guys. Good luck out there. We'll see you soon.